be coming here just to get inspired and go home and then you get inspired again the next month let's actually create cool i just wanted to start off with that can you open the powerpoint okay so um uh, yeah that one okay go full screen Yeah, press F5. I'm gonna share some tips. Um, ooh. Okay, you can go all the way down, that's fine. And you get to info my things. So, um, so I'm gonna share my tips and like stuff that I know that help me make some cool stuff. Skip this, skip this, skip this. Yeah, okay, so, so I think, I mean, this is the first indie film grind session for the year, so, I think one thing that we, we should do is have goals for 2018, you know, like practical goals and say like, yo, I'm going to make a movie, a short five minute film every month, you know, it's small, but you can actually do it, you know, rather than say, oh, I want to make movies, I, I want to get, people always say, I want to get funding, I'm, I'm just waiting for the funding, you know, <laughs> like, bro, everyone's waiting for the funding. And also even applying to the NFVF. How many people are applying to the NFVF? How many people are experienced that are applying to the NFVF? And you think that you're going to get funding there. Like, so, yes, maybe you might, but like, I think it's... It would be nice to assume that you're not going to get funding and then try and make a movie from that point. Just like, you can apply, but just think of... Just think like, yo, can I really make a movie? Can I shoot at my house? Like, I'm sure... You know, I know personally, I've used my mom's house like a lot of times and she understands like, yo, from the shoot, I'm bringing my friends and we abuse it until we can't shoot anymore because we shot so many movies there, you know, so let's take about using what we have. Next slide. Okay, cool. So, I mean, I'm not like perfect or successful or anything, but I'm going to share my knowledge and what I think can help people get ahead, you know. Um, I like this quote, it says, our parents had one job and we will have five. You know, the next generation will have five jobs at the same time. So, I go to the next one. Um, there's this big argument of being a specific discipline and being a jack of all trades. I believe in being a jack of all trades because it empowers you, it makes you understand more, especially, you know, even if you're an actor, like, at least learn how to write so that you can write stuff for you and you make stuff with your friends, you know. Um, also, it will make you more valuable and more indispensable, you know, because we all know that, um, that the industry is tough. It's really tough, especially unemployment is really high. Um, and the more skills you have, the more people are more likely to hire you. Yeah, go to the next one. Um, next one. Okay, so everyone thinks that you're going to go to college, study for four years, and then you're going to find a job, and then you're going to retire with a gold watch. That, and we've seen so many pictures on Facebook of people, boards, whether they study engineering or like chemical, whatever, they've got degrees, but they are jobless, and they have one skill. You know, that's a reality in our country, and we always, and I always feel bad, and I share these things, but I feel like if you know have a bunch of skills you can actually uh be very valuable so i think it's good to be a hyphen uh go to the next one what i mean to a hyphen is try to learn different things but obviously before you become this or this you have to master one skill right so once you master one skill then you learn the other one don't like box yourself in which i'm only a writer i just write i just want someone to sell my scripts to a director, you know, like, you know, okay, do your writing, but like, make goals with, okay, you know what, I'll write for these first six months, and then after six months, I want to learn how that, what directing is about, so that you can make your own movie, so you don't have to rely on people. I, I, I do a lot of stuff myself for my films when I shoot my friends. Yes, it's bad because I don't trust anyone <laughs> to like shoot. Uh, I have trust issues, but also I've been disappointed so many times. Yeah, I do have the trust issues because I've been disappointed so many times where I got to a point where I'm like, fuck it, I'm not going to ask for anyone. If like a movie has to happen or it won't happen, it won't happen because I decided it's not going to happen. You know, it's not because my edits are dropped out 
we got sick or decided to go party, I know I can just like, yo, I don't need him, I can edit. I don't need the camera guy, I can fucking shoot, you know. So it that's how it's helped me where I'm like, yes, obviously it's nice to like master one thing, but to know a little bit of everything kind of helps. You know, you don't have to know everything, but like learn a new skill and it makes it makes you even valuable. Um, this is what I do at work. I'm a copywriter, I'm a director, and I'm a producer. And I also edit, so that's four jobs, you know. So um, it helps me, like when I apply for a gig, people call me, hey, come on, you know, it, you, you see it there. So it's, it's, it's not like, it, it's big. I think it would be better when you apply for a job and you've got all these skills, right? They're like, ah, you're fresh out of college, you know. I have a lot of friends that run their own companies. I'm like, dude, why aren't you hiring people? There's a guy, he runs a sound company, they mix. I'm like, dude, you work alone. Why do you work alone? You know, what happens when you're sick? You've got so many clients. And he's like, ah, I don't want to hire students because they don't know. Shit. That's what they think. They think students don't know anything. They, like, I mean, it's true. You don't know anything. You just went to film school, but you don't know, like, how to do things in the practical world. Like, I see it even at work where someone, they'll have a new student and now you have to teach them to edit. Nobody wants to teach anyone anything. I even like, ah, and that guy mustn't come to me, I'm busy, you know. <laughs> We're all selfish, but that's just how it is. So, hence again, like making yourself indispensable and valuable will help you get employment or actually, you know, run your own company, you know. Because um, you know, like the amount of graduates coming out of varsity amount of jobs in the industry like the numbers don't match you know it's very it's hectic like I, I don't I don't even want to lie so try to learn different things and have different skills okay cool next one uh, okay kind of like saying the same thing I said okay so I think the first thing for you to take yourself for other people to take yourself seriously register a company I mean so many people are like oh, I've got a company so what's your company name Ah, oh, no, I haven't registered. Uh, you know, like, just register. It costs 175 bucks, the CIPC. Then, you know, when you come to someone, you're like, ah, oh, the amount of jobs in the industry, like, the numbers don't match, you know? It's very, it's hectic. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even want to lie. So, try to learn different things and have different skills. Okay, cool. Next one. Uh, okay, kind of like saying the same thing I said. Okay, so I think the first thing for you to take yourself, for other people to take yourself seriously, register a company. I mean, so many people are like, oh, I've got a company. So what's your company name? Ah, oh, no, I haven't registered. Uh, you know, like just register. It costs 175 bucks, the CIPC. Then, you know, when you come to someone, you're like, oh, I'm actually, like it's actually impressive when someone says, yo, I actually have a company. It's called, I don't know, Cherry Pie Productions. Love. Even if you don't have a website or whatever, but at least like you're taking yourself seriously, you know, and other people will take you seriously. So to say, ah, no, yeah, no, we're hustling, you know, it's like, Ish, okay, bro. how many people are hustling? They don't have companies. Like, it's so simple. It's so, it takes like a week, two weeks max to register a company. So I think register a company. Um, next one. Okay, cool. So I'm going to share some resources and tools that I use to try to get ahead and uh, they, they they just help you with your filmmaking career and stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, I was gonna say. So if you register your company, I know there's people that design logos and they want two thousand rand or five thousand. You know, there's a website called Fiverr. You can pay someone to design a logo for you for four hundred bucks. It it is it's the cheapest you can get. But like, you know, if you wanna go for it and have a logo, you don't have to have a logo. But you mustn't think, yo, I need to pay someone like. 2,000. I wouldn't pay anyone 2,000. You know, shit, I wouldn't pay. <laughs> okay, next slide. Okay, so maybe get familiar with all these uh, online resources. I'm sure you put, some of y'all probably know this one. It's called No Film School. They talk about everything, filmmaking, film, films, the acting, like everything is on here. Everything. Film Right is a YouTube channel. They also kind of touch on everything. Acting, directing, editing, vision effects how to make blood, how to make smoke, like, they review cameras. There's another one called Cinema 5D, it's a forum. So if you have a camera and you shoot stuff, 
you can always ask questions if you like you know i don't know your camera you wanna i don't know install magic bullets or whatever there's all these questions that you could uh like click on i mean people already ask the questions that you you know so there's a lot of online discussions on cinema but it's more of a camera and shooting how to light things how do you light a scene at night you know what type of lights do you use which lights do you use so there's a lot of information there this is also another one similar to film right they review cameras if you want to buy a camera they review so many cameras you can decide which one you want to buy because i can't press i can recommend but like there's too many cameras to even suggest uh this guy edits is about is an editing youtube channel so it talks about um it talks about editing it uh it speaks about like the, the thought behind editing i mean not practically teaching you how to use Premiere Pro or Final Cut, but it's just, it's just teaching you how, how movies are edited, you know, it's really, you just watch them, you know, go to these sites every day, like for 10 minutes and read something new, you know, I consume all of these sites all the time, because I always want to learn about new stuff, but obviously it gets overloaded, loaded sometimes, because there's so many new cameras, but it's good to know certain things that maybe might help you, you know, uh, Buff Nerds is one of my favorites. So it's ran by a guy who shoots music videos. He breaks down how he shoots music videos, the different styles, the way he edits, the way he, 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 the cameras that he uses. He even talks about how to make money as an independent filmmaker. And he tells you, this is how I do it. You, this is how you can do it, you know, because as much as yes, you're shooting videos, but how do you up your game and actually shoot more stuff? How do you get bigger clients? How do you charge, you know, I mean, I know the whole issue of money, people don't really want to talk about it a lot when you say, how do I charge for a music video? I mean, you see on like Facebook, you know, I'll shoot the music video for 5,000. Like, a music video is not 5,000. You know, it doesn't cost an amount. Yes, you want to get clients, but like, that's like a piece of one of the gear for a really good music video. So uh, it's a really cool site to check out. Okay, cool, next one. Okay, cool. So. This is an app, it's available on iOS, so like if you have an Apple or an Android, it's called Filmic Pro. Uh, it costs 200 bucks, so basically it turns your camera into kind of like a professional camera. So you can control all the settings, you can shoot slow more, you can shoot time lapses, you can control white balance, frame, frame rate. It literally kind of helps your camera, it, like, it makes your smartphone camera better. Than what it is it actually gets better quality obviously the better phone you have the better it will shoot if you have an iphone 10 it's going to be amazing that movie uh show the iphone 7 is probably shot on this so i recommend this app like to death i know it's 100 bucks but you can buy it on google play or, or itunes if you have an iphone it's really good even if you just want to shoot your vlog you can use this app vlog with the iphone um next so that's how it looks like, you know, obviously you have to get used to using it. If your phone has a lot of space and you can shoot a lot of stuff, but it's not, we'll be dumping footage every now and then. But it, it literally looks, has a lot of settings, as you can see, it goes to the next one. And there's another one I discovered, I don't like it. <laughs> you said you like this I don't know, it's something about, maybe I'm, I need to play around with it. But there's something about like some, you know, like the thing about the thing about free things is that they're free, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So they don't have all the perks. But it's this one is free. I know it's available on Android. I don't know about iOS. I'm not sure, but it's free. It also does the same thing. But I don't recommend it. But try it out. If it's good, come back and let me know. Um, okay, next one. This is how it looks like. Sorry, this is. A pixelated photo, it's not actually a thing. Okay, cool. So, there's a site that I use called canva.com. So, if you ever like hosting events or doing, I don't know, you want to upgrade your social media stuff or for your company or whatever you want to do for social media, it's like Photoshop but it's online and it's free. Go to the next slide. So, this is what it looks like. So, you log on with your Facebook account. And then you can create a Facebook, like a social media post, whether it's for Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, go all the different sizes. And it's got templates that you can just like choose a template and then write an inspirational quotes. You know, Dubai is the place to be, or whatever you're gonna say. But but it's a it's a really cool uh, uh, 
online uh, uh, website. It's free and it makes your shit look better. I've used it before. Go to the next one. I'll show you. I've made some movie posters out of it. Okay, this is the interface. Let's say you want to make a poster. Shows you all the templates. Go to the next one. And then, you know, then you just change the text. You can change the color. And then you just download it here as a PDF to print or a JPEG and stuff like that. So if maybe you're making a movie and you want to make a poster for it, it's got movie posters that you can just change. Um, or you have an event like this event. I use this site to kind of create the stuff. It's not amazing, but it's free, you know. Can't afford to pay other people. Um, and it's decent, you know. Go to the next slide. So these are like some movie posters that I've made for some movies I still want to make. This is me trying to create hype for the movies. Um, yeah, so I got a poster and you, I changed the image and changed the colors and stuff like that. And it looks, it looks decent. It's not too bad, you know. Um, the images, are, I get them from free stock image sites. So you can use that. You don't have to pay for that. So you can do it. If you want to take a picture and put yourself in, that's great, but it's, if you're a designer, you can't afford to pay a designer. You can use the site and it pretty much does some awesome stuff. Next slide. I like that poster very much. It's a web series that I'm still doing. <laughs> um, but it looks cool, you know, it's not too bad. And another movie, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a cool tool. It's not that hard. It, there's no like crazy things. Just play around with it and maybe if like we have time, maybe at the next session before, um, we will have, we can have a quick power where we show you how to use it, you know? Um, Cause I know personally, I, I just like playing around with things until I learn how to use it. That's the next slide. So yeah, these are the, these, there's some more stuff. So these are free stock image sites. So if you're building a website or you're doing whatever, you can get really nice pictures, whether it's pictures of cameras or filmmakers, whatever you want, it's, it's on you, it's nice pictures and it's free. So whether you're building a website or you're making an event, whatever you, you know, you want to post on Instagram or whatever, you can go to these sites and all the pictures from here are free. Uh, next one, okay, I spoke about film rights. Next one, this guy edits, it's another channel. Okay, so, I'm gonna talk about places to hire gear. So if you don't have a camera or you know you don't have a rich uncle, you can hire gear. <laughs> so places around Joburg. Next one. Okay, there's a place, okay, it's, it's not called Mates, it's called Glow Hire for Young Smarts. Uh, Glow Hire the Coza, Camelot.coza, Puma Video Media Film Service. So I use Camelot a lot. Because oh, nice. um, because here you hire a camera, right? They have really cheap prices. So let's say if you're making a movie, you hire it on the Friday, and you return it on the Monday. So like, and you pay for one day. So other places they'll make you pay for like the Friday and the Saturday and the Sunday, you know, and probably like the Monday. But if you hire it here, you get it on the Friday, in the afternoon, and you can shoot the whole weekend, and then um, yeah, return it on Monday. And then, yeah, these are the sites that I use. Next slide. Oh, do you guys, are you still taking pictures? No, writing stuff, huh? Okay, next slide. Okay, this is another one, it's called Broadcast Lighting. So they're based in Midland. They also have like a shitload of cameras. They're pretty decent. I mean, obviously I wouldn't recommend like you hire a camera that if you break, you can't pay for it. You know, <laughs> I don't do that because uh, I, I don't want if it breaks, then I'm like stuck. You know, um, so try hire the cheaper cameras. At least if anything happens, it's not like you're irresponsible, but if anything happens, it won't be that bad, you know? Um, but yeah, this is Camelot. They have everything from PA systems to lights, to sound, to, you know, it's very easy. You can go on their site, email them, and then try open an account with them. Um, they're very cheap. Their cheapest camera is like 450 which is a 70 and you know, they have a shitload of cameras uh, and lights also. Like they're the best, like we've got the best prices. Um, they got such good prices that you never actually get the gear because everyone is always hiring stuff from them. So we have to like hire it early if you wanna hire, but then probably like book it on a Monday and pick it up on Friday. But 
But yeah, they're very good. Okay, next slide. Oh, this is Glow Hire. They also have kind of decent prices. If you want to buy gear, okay, yeah, it's a like Glow Hire. If you want to buy gear, obviously there's takealot.com and there's Ohms. It's a little pricey, but they have all the cameras you could ever ask for. Any gear that you buy, you could buy from here and they'll deliver to you. And they're reliable because they're pretty big. But they're a little pricey. Take a lot is, a, is better sometimes, but they don't have as much stuff as this uh, website. This is a website called Homes. Um, and go back, go back, sorry. Okay, so that's like the cheapest, most decent. Hey, what's up? Can I say something about Homes? Yeah. It's too expensive. Use Orms to find what you want and then search for it everywhere else before you buy it from Orms. Yeah. Country, take a lot, spaza shop, wherever you can buy it, because Orms is just, it's always going to be more expensive than that. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is. Like, but also Gumtree is very tricky because there's scams there. So as much as the cheap stuff on Gumtree. Take a lot is reliable. Yeah, take yeah, yeah. Reliable. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's other, like, there's, there's lots of web stores now. There's even, like, um, American ones, like Wantero where you can go there and they pick the stuff up from America and deliver it. So then how is this coming from America and it's still cheaper than Orms? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, I don't know. Orms seems they like just want to make profit, man. They just care about making money. But yeah, yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. I always, I know that I know more sites than this, but I don't want to recommend them because I haven't tried them. Some of them, it's like you paid before, you know, like what if you pay the companies in Cape Town and then you don't get your money back? Who are you gonna call? Like they'll just not answer your number. <laughs> so, so I am recommending the ones that I know. But yeah, Wanted All is pretty good. I know about it. Take a lot is very like, like trustworthy. So they won't have you over here. So that's like the cheapest camera if you ever want to start vlogging or whatever. I mean, according to my opinion, you know, it's the cheapest and the most decent is camera. You can get quite some good stuff. From uh, take a lot. Um, you can also buy it in credit, but I wouldn't recommend it. You're not trying to be in debt, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty cheap and it takes really amazing pictures and decent videos. And you can choose movies with it. So yeah, it's a really basic camera. Next slide. Okay, cool. Um, so some scripts of writing softwares. There's Celtics, Final Draft, the movie Magic Screenwriter. You can pretty much get charged for most of them. Celtics, I'm going to hand out a piece of paper for you guys to fill in, just like a survey thing. If you write your email address, I can send you Celtics. I'll send you a zip file via email. You can have it. Um, yeah, and you can write your scripts in it. Um, Final Draft, you can download a trial, but you can only write 15 pages. Unless you crack it. Um, and Movie Magic Screenwriter is also pretty cool. So these are some script, script writing softwares. Okay, next one. Next slide. Oh, okay, cool. There's also a, a program called Frameforge, which helps you storyboard. Next slide. So, obviously, after you've written a script, you can either draw the storyboard, you can draw if you've got time, or you can use Frameforge. I use Frameforge. It's pretty cool because it looks nice-ish and it's nice to communicate with your with your with your crew and say, yo. Every dollar donate will bring me one. Like she's putting herself out there. We need to learn to do that. I know obviously not all of us are like camera happy and stuff, but just try. I mean it might be terrible or you might hate it, but like or maybe I don't know, I don't know if you can look the other way and shoot, but like Try to put yourself out there, and she probably raised money for a film, and just by putting herself out there and making a really interesting video. So I think it's really something that is underused, and even if you don't like get the funding, at least you you have a pitch video for your film. You know, I think. And one thing I also forgot to say is that um, so when people when people ask you for 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 money, so they'll have like different donation amounts or say you can either pay one dollar or two dollar five dollars ten dollars twenty five hundred they'll have perks for you so perks are like a, a reward so for 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 like donating maybe let's say a dollar 
they'll say, oh, if you donate a dollar, we'll send you a, a social media shout out. You could actually record a video and say, thank you, Dan, for donating to us. If you pay like $5, maybe we'll send you a shout out and like a copy of a digitally signed poster, you know. Um, or some, of, some people send t-shirts. So the higher the amount goes, the more rewards people get. So you're giving them incentive to give you money, you know. Some, some uh, crowdfunding campaigns say, oh, if you donate this certain amount, send us your picture and we'll put your picture in the movie or you can be an extra in the movie, you know? I mean, most of it happens like in London and America and stuff. Obviously, you can't fly people here to be in your movie, but you, you can be creative in terms of what you can give people. You can give, give people a copy of the, of the script or you can give give people a, a copy, a digital download of the movie when it's done. Because then they feel like, you know what, they contributed to something, I'm actually getting something in return. So it's better than just saying, ah, please help me, it's my dream, but you're not giving people rewards and prizes for like actually donating. So it's, uh, it's really interesting. Um, can you go to the uh, list again? Um, play this one. The second man. Hey everyone, I'm Jesse, and I'm Steve, and we're the directors for Hand Roll, A Photo About Cigars. It's a feature-like documentary on the artisan and craft of premium cigars and all the beautiful people that are involved with them. Now, you might be thinking that a premium cigar is similar to a cigarette and that it might be machine-made, but in actuality it's not. It's a 100% handmade product with over 300 pairs of hands that touch the tobacco from seed to smoke. And there are only three products that actually go, or three ingredients that actually go into a premium cigar. And that's tobacco, water, and vegetable glue. Now, we've got about 70% of the film in the can, but we need your help to finish this. Hey guys, we're really trying to tell the human story here. And with the help of some awesome people like Pete Johnson of Tatuaje Cigars, Daniel Marshall, Nick Malilo of Foundation Cigars, and the Saints and Sinners Club, along with some of our own personal money, We've been able to travel to Nicaragua and film with some of the biggest names in the industry and some people that you will have never heard of, like farm workers and factory workers. We traveled all throughout California, Florida, Connecticut, uh, interviewing major manufacturers, celebrities, and influencers. Yeah, I mean, we've got stop. about 50 interviews right now so far, and we've also got... Okay, one thing also about the video, your video has to be exciting. Like, I'm already bored here, like, I don't care about cigar, unless if I was like a cigar smoker, I'd be like, oh, mm, I like cigars, you know, like, I would. But obviously, if you do a video, you can't just be sitting here and like, you know, just talking into camera, it's very boring and people will just skip the video. So the very first video was like really cool and creative, that girl, you know, playing with Jason, you know, you have to be creative with your, with your video, you know, it's up to you how you do it. But you just have to put in efforts. If you don't put in efforts, no one's gonna care. Yeah. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, there was one that I did, but I wanted to show you guys, but I can't find it. It's really terrible. Um, yeah, too bad. Um, can you? Uh, you can... Maybe you can say full screen from current slide or something. Yeah. So go to slideshow from current slide. Cool. So first thing is you need a video. Um, next, uh, obviously you need to say what your goal is. I need to raise five thousand. <laughs> obviously, if it's five thousand rand, I mean most of these sites only work with like dollars and pounds. So you have to calculate if you need five thousand rand, how much is it in dollars, or pounds, or whatever. Next slide. Uh, you also need to explain why you're making this movie. You know, it's my dream or, I mean, everyone says it's my dream. So maybe say it's for a good cause or it's something that, you know, like, be, don't lie, but just be creative. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, next one. And why should they help you? Out of all these, because there's a lot of people like making these videos. Why should they help you? You know, um, you have to say that in, in the video. Um, go down. Oh, and how will the money be used? Most of these crowdfunding campaigns, they literally break down. They'll say like, we need 10,000 rand, and 1,000 will go to like, paying for food for the actors. 1,000 will go to gear, 1,000 will go to sound, 1,000 will go to mixing. So breaking it down kind of helps. It's not just like, ah, I give you money, I'll sort it out by myself. You know, it's like, it, it, it shows that you're serious and you're trying to be transparent to the people and say, yo, this is what I'm gonna do with the money. I'm not really gonna like pocket it and go balling or whatever. Okay, next slide. Um, usually you have, you showcase who your team is. Obviously it helps your team have worked on a whole bunch of films. You have pictures, who your crew crew is, little like little blobs about who your, 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 your cast and crew is, their experiences. Next one. Oh, obviously why are you making this film? Next one. Um, so, so what they do is, let's say you want to make ten thousand rand, right? Um, so some of these uh, crowdfunding campaigns will say, okay, if you say you want to make ten thousand rand, right? If you get to ten thousand rand, they get a fee. Obviously, Indiegogo or Kickstarter will get a fee. But if so, there's two options. It's like either you go you either make your your goal or or you if, if you make your goal you get all the money and they get a certain percentage which is probably like lower or higher lower yeah and then if you don't make your goal the other option is that if you don't make the goal you don't get the money at all so you can say you want it all if, if you get it you get it if you don't reach your goal do you still want your money if you still want your money if you didn't get to your goal They'll obviously take more money from you, so it's like a it's like a catch, you know. Obviously, they're trying to make money, and also in your video you need to explain like what you're gonna do if you don't reach a goal and if you're still gonna take that money. So maybe you'll say like, if I don't reach my goal, I'll still try, and maybe instead of shooting a feature, we'll make it a short film and try to build from that, you know, because you know it, it builds trust with the people that are watching the video and your campaign and stuff. Okay, cool. Next one. Uh, spoken about rewards. Next one. Uh, spoken about this. Next one. Pictures. Obviously, you need a lot of pictures. So, pictures of your cars, your locations. Maybe it even helps sometimes if you have a trailer and say, This is my trailer for my movie. I need money for this. And, you know, it actually shows initiative and just say, Ah, I have a script. I have a dream. But if you have a trailer, it helps. Next one, pretty cool. So, social media. Um, I really, really think it's really important and can really help us get ahead. Whether you're promoting a film or you're promoting your campaign, I think we need to like learn how to use these things. You know, let's say what I do, I mean, it might not be the best way to do it, but as soon as I come up with an idea for a film, I make the poster, then I post it. And it puts pressure on me to actually make the movie because now it's like, oh shit, you have a new poster. Oh, you know, at least have people talking about it. Fucking make a Facebook page, invite all your friends and start posting stuff. Every time you have like a rehearsal, take pictures. You go location scouting, take pictures, take a video. Build like an audience for, for, for your film because even if you make a film and you, it shows that's the clinical, like if you don't have there's a Washington in your cast. You need people to know about your film and you need to build anticipation. I mean, we see that a lot with American films. Yes, they have budgets, but we can also kind of do it with social media because it's free, you know? Um, even if you shoot a trailer, you can advertise it on Facebook. I mean, Facebook advertising is not that expensive. You get 5,000 people to see a video and you pay like 300 bucks. So that's like, I mean, obviously not free, but it's a lot of reach for your video. Because your friends, yeah, they might come to see a movie, but if nobody knows about your movie, I mean, let's think about it. Like, when you watch a movie, usually 
uh, told by someone else, like, yo, my God, I watched this movie. You know, word of mouth. Like, I watched this movie, it's amazing. And if no one knows about your movie, and you're busy saying, ah, uh, follow me, I'm a filmmaker, blah, 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 it doesn't really help. So I think it's really important to abuse social media. So if you have a project, take pictures, take videos, talk about it. Like, you have to, like, abuse it. Okay. Next slide. Okay, cool. So just some quick tips on social, social media for filmmaking. Next slide. Okay, obviously, we have all these social media sites. Um, what I try to do, I try to learn all of them and see how I can promote my stuff. There's a new one called Vroom. Does anyone know what Vroom is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't like it, but I, I learn it because I just want to, there's, there's people there, people watch. So, you know, that's where people's attentions are, you know, on social media. Instagram stories. I mean, all these, I mean, you, the rule is not to post the same thing throughout all the, 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 the social media sites because they're not the same. Obviously, Instagram is about pictures. Facebook is also about pictures, but they're not on the same level. Twitter is a little bit different to like Facebook. I mean, I, I'm, people watch videos, but not that much. You know, it's not the same user experience. So if you're going to promote your film on Facebook, maybe it's nice to put your trailer on, on YouTube and Instagram, maybe Facebook because you know, it lasts longer. But if you put a video on Twitter, Twitter, there's so much feeds going past so quickly. If you're advertising something on Twitter, you need to tweet like 10 times a day. I mean, hence, that's why we have social media people that actually work as social media people. So it's very, you have to treat every platform differently because they're, they're not the same. So for you to treat the same thing, it's not going to work. You know, so I think it's very important to explore them even if you just post a picture, see how people react, see what people to react to. Um, Facebook is nice because let's say if you create a, a Facebook page for your movie, you can come up with content for the next 30 days and then you can schedule them and say every day at 10 o'clock I want to, this post to go up. You literally have one day where you set up all your posts for the whole month to go to, to, to keep posting whether it's content or whatever. That's nice. That's what's nice about Facebook. You can schedule it and forget about it. You're like, oh shit, I forgot about this. But these other ones, you can't. YouTube, you can. Um, but all these other ones, you have to be interacting with people. Because you get to meet like a lot of people. But funny enough, I met Cheryl on Instagram. So I was posting. She's like, oh, what is this? What blah, blah, blah. And, I'm, and she was like, okay, cool. I want to come to the event. And now she's talking. So you see, like a lot of things that happen. You can connect with a lot of people. And probably a lot of you are here because you saw this on social media, you know. Um, so use it for whatever you're trying to sell or to build a, a, a brand for your film, to market it, use it, please, please. And learn. Okay, next slide. Oh yeah, so on the platform, each platform is different. Next one. Uh, so when you upload a video to YouTube, right, and then you share it to Facebook, it's not as like easy to watch that video on Facebook it, versus uploading a video to Facebook and when you're on Facebook, it just automatically plays. But when it's on YouTube and you share it on Facebook, like obviously these are two different companies so they don't really want to help each other. They want you to post your videos on Facebook and if on YouTube, you post videos on, 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 on YouTube, if that makes sense. But yeah, it, you have to pick carefully in which uh, social media site you use. Next one. Uh, and you need to create different kinds of content. I mean, you, this is like part of your, it should be actually part of your business plan for your film. You should like, a lot of people shoot web series and they put it online and then they haven't really built like momentum for their web series. It's like, oh, I'm gonna put a web series and put them on YouTube. You don't even know who your target market is, so how are you going to market? So you need to have a social media strategy on your business plan and say, okay, my movie is about college kids, so okay, I'm going to, what do college kids like? They're on Instagram, some of them on Vue, I'm going to advertise there, you know, um, and, and create cool content for that, actually, that actual platform. And obviously, Instagram, you'll have that boomerang thing or whatever. You know, you have to be smart about it. And also has to be new content. It can't be the same thing. Check out my move. Check out my move. Like, you can't say that every day. 
you know, so you have to be creative. You have to work twice as hard to actually market your movies. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Next one. Uh, okay, I don't like this. I don't read emails that are like spam. Mm -hmm. I like, no, <laughs> I unsubscribe. But some people, like, I mean, we're all different. There, there's some websites that you subscribe to because you like the content, you know, so you have to be careful how you use emails. Don't just email every email in your email. Like, make sure people want to get your emails because people just delete. There's so many spam emails. So use it if people are really interested. If pe Maybe if you have a subscribe button on your website, then people, you know that they actually want to get that content, blog updates about your film or whatever it is. So use this wisely. Next slide. And obviously hashtags. These are very important. Um, I mean, the first time I was like, got introduced to Instagram, I saw people post like a picture of like food, be like food, delicious, hashtag this, and be like 10,000 like hashtags. I don't understand why, but it can help with your movie. Let's say your movie is called, I don't know, the other guy or whatever. Obviously, whenever you post, you want to say hashtag the other guy. So if you say, hey, dude, I've got a movie. You tell someone, hey, I've got a movie. It's called The Other Guy. Someone can just search on social media and say, hashtag The Other Guy, and they find it. You know? Obviously, you, you can use hashtags differently across the different platforms. Like Twitter, you have hashtags, but they don't use as many. If you post on Twitter with like a shitload of hashtags, people just like get turned off by that. But on Instagram, it's different. So you have to like be strategic with that. Um, but also, it also helps build your profile. So, like, for instance, if you're making a film about Joe Berg, to say, like, the other guy, hashtag Joe Berg film, essay film, it's like, it's creating your content, and then more people are gonna find your content. If someone is looking for a film, maybe Joe Berg will, will type hashtag Joe, Joe Berg film, and then they'll find your, your content. You know, so you, you need to think about it. I know it's a lot, but, like, just think about it. Next slide. Oh, and obviously communicate with your audience. People usually ask questions. Um, and look at other brands. Like I, I follow like YFM on Facebook. I realize that they don't just say, ah, catch us at 11, you know, DJ is bad and bad. They actually ask questions and people actually talk to them. So try to have a conversation with the people that you're creating content for. You know, ask them a question, see if they interact. And the more interaction you get, that's actually better. It might be even better than likes, you know, because um, then people are generally interested. They're just liking it because they like a picture, you know, so have a conversation with them. And don't just say, look, we have a movie out, you know, talk about stuff. Um, um, okay, next slide. Okay, yeah, pick a handle and stick to it. So the okay, movie's called The Other Guys, so then across all your social media, your Twitter for that movie will be called The Other Guys, Facebook, Instagram. So it's just easy to, just to find it, you know. It just helps. Next one. Add words to your pictures, whether it's inspirational or you want to, like, ask a question. Don't just post pictures only. You know, it's good if you say something. Um, next slide. Uh... So, obviously, when you're creating your social media uh, campaign or whatever, you're raising awareness for your film, but you have a strategy. You probably want people to come to your website, right? So, mention your website on your, on your social media. Maybe, I mean, a really shitty example is um, I'm working on a movie with my friends, right? And our plan is to distribute it online, like on Vimeo on demand because the chemical might be a bit expensive. If you don't get it distributed, we still want to distribute the movie. So one of the strategies is to actually, if we're going to post on social media and all these things, we want to educate people about video on demand and say, actually, you can watch our movie here, you know, uh, and, and um, okay, I forgot what my point was, but have a strategy how you, how you what, what you want the people to do. Yes, they can like it, but if they go to your website, then they, they can find out more like info about your film 
or you know have have a strategy. Um, next slide. Oh yeah, and be creative. Yeah, don't just like post boring pictures in the dark where we can't even see. Like we are shooting at night, but the pictures, yeah, yeah. So be creative. Um, and yeah, use it, abuse it, and like, yeah, use social media. And uh, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. You guys have questions?